What's good, y'all? So UFC 302 just wrapped up last night, and I'm going to be breaking down what went down in those fights. Um, let's just start with the first most important fight, the last fight of the night. Islam Makhachev versus Dustin Poirier. Islam, of course, defends his belt with a fifth round submission. I think it was a Darce choke. Um, super gritty performance. Honestly, I'm so impressed with Dustin Poirier. I can't believe he made it as far as he did in that fight. I thought it was going to be a first round submission. It ends up being a fifth. I'm not mad at it, I guess. You know, I got a main event pick correct and I got the method correct, but holy fuck. I've like grown up with Dustin Poirier. It feels like it, it literally feels like he's like family with how many fights I've watched and like just how much uh, adrenaline's pumped through me for this man. How much just everything, bro. Like I really, I really love this man. <laughs> he's such a, a great fighter and it sucks that three times around. He's not winning no belt, and he's losing it every time by submission. He gets a nightmare matchup in basically every single fight. I mean, at the time, we thought Charles was going to be a solid matchup for him. We were so wrong. It definitely was a nightmare matchup. Um, but the most obvious ones were Khabib and Islam. Just the hardest matchup in the whole division for him. And he gets it for the title. For the title. And it, it's pretty fitting because, you know, his motto is um, paid in full and it, he really always just gets the hardest route it's just how it goes it's why everyone loves him i hope he doesn't retire because he's really shown that like he has some wars left in him he really does if you can compete like that with islam for five rounds regardless of whether or not islam had staff like like it kind of seemed like he did um if you can really do that you can defend those takedowns most of the matchups in this division are going to be safe for dustin like he should make his money i i want to see him versus connor again Honestly, like I hope they make that fight at some point so Dustin can make some more bread on his way out But yeah, uh, let's talk about the winner though Islam solid performance You know a lot of people are gonna hate on him because his first defense against the 55er He kind of didn't look the greatest, but I'm gonna be honest with you. He showed me a lot of heart He showed me that he really is a fighter um, And and you really do need to see that from these guys sometimes that fucking um, that takedown he, he hit at the end of the fight the uh, I don't even know what to call it. It's like a drag that was crazy that was so impressive the second i saw it i knew it was wraps i thought he was just gonna hold dustin down there but no he jumps right on a submission so you gotta respect it he's out here finishing people left and right i would like to see him stay at 55 and defend his belt he was talking about going up to fight leon edwards don't do that and honestly i think leon might expose him a little bit um you should stay at 55 there's some good matchups here really make it so people can't deny you as the champion that you are because there's still a lot of people that hate on islam i saw a post just last night that went down his resume and it was somebody basically clowning every win he had except for the the charles one they put like a literally cgi or some shit like that so like obviously everyone has to respect that win it was prime charles but um a lot of these other wins they do look kind of sour in hindsight so just keep proving yourself then we had the co-main event we don't need to talk about the uh, about the judge like right when i heard after the first fight of the night that that judge was going to be calling the co-main event i knew that paulo was going to get around a uh, judge in regardless of what happened they showed these dirty slimy motherfuckers showed that they tried to get sean strickland out of here bro they already did it with cannoneer they did it with fucking his title and now they really tried to remove him from the picture even though he clearly won that fight i'm not gonna lie i thought paulo could have taken rounds one and two but just because of like the visual of him moving backwards and being on the bike the whole time, I could see it going to Sean. Uh, ultimately, he did what I thought he was gonna do. He won a decision dominantly. It should have been in a unanimous decision. And I feel so bad for anybody out there that bet unanimous decision. That should have been the freest payday of your fucking life. And they robbed you of it. That judge needs to be held accountable. We should fucking boycott him. We should do something about that. But overall, Sean Strickland gets the win. Paulo Costa shows that he is just I don't know, maybe he needs to go up to light heavyweight and reinvent himself because middleweight, he just cannot compete with the best of them. And that's unfortunately just how it is for whatever reason. Um, oh, Kevin, I picked you. I picked you to get a finish. I thought it would be a knockout. Instead, you almost get knocked the fuck out and then you break Michelle Oleksiejczyk's arm. I was losing my shit in my house yesterday because why is Herb going to let Michelle break his arm you're already you know you see that he's stuck in it you decide not to stop it even though he clearly can't get out until you watch it snap and he's still fighting let him fucking fight the rest of the round at least what are you doing why did you wait till it snapped then if you're just gonna stop it regardless stop it before it snaps like am i the only i hope i'm not the only person out there that thinks this because that blew my mind how did they let that happen 
Um, you know, Michelle's a beast. He still wanted to fight. Credit to Kevin for wrapping it up. I really wish he could have just got the knockout so I could get my payday, my green. But nah, either way, solid. I called it. I knew that he was going to just wash these bottom of the barrel guys at uh, middleweight and welterweight. It's just how it goes. Um, enough said. Moving down. Nico Price and Alex Morono. I'm not going to talk too much about a couple of these fights. Like, I'm not going to talk about every fight on the card because not everything was significant. The card got like a six, maybe six and a half overall on uh, my ratings list. Nico Price ends up beating Alex Morono. I feel like I let you guys down because I didn't even know that they fought before. Um, so that's on me. I should have done a little bit more research. I just thought Alex Morono on paper looked so much better in every fight I've seen him in. And then he comes out looking the worst he's ever looked in any performance gassing out in like the first round and just letting nico price kind of land on him craziness nico price ends up cashing in cashing in at a 215 underdog what can you say moving down randy brown and elizio zaleski dos santos i thought i was going to cash in on the plus 150 i picked easy d and uh he let me down randy brown ends up barely squeaking out a win elizzy was doing good he got around with back control time and I, it was looking like he could have done that again. But then he lets Randy Brown flip it and kind of get his own moments. And on the feet, Randy Brown just looked a lot more crisp. So I knew what I was coming into when I decided to take that fight. But it is what it is. Oh, and by the way, overall, we ended 8-4 and four with the main event pick going correct. I forgot to say that at the beginning of the card. But yeah, not my best pay-per-view. Obviously, not the worst. 8-4 and four is not terrible. Then we had Cesar Almeida, Roman Kopilov. Another one that I thought, I thought Cesar Almeida, I didn't know why he was the favorite, but I thought that he, you know, well, actually, I get why he was the slight favorite. I really thought he could get it done on the feet. And he was looking crisp with the leg kicks, kind of piecing up Roman in the first round. But Roman just mixed in the takedowns. And that, for some reason, is something I completely spaced on in my prediction video. So good shit for Roman. He's one of my top prospects. I'm not mad at it. Cesar Almeida really needs to go back and work on that ground game. He, he's not going to be the next trauma if he can't, you know, defend takedowns from someone like Roman Kopilov. Uh, Jalton Almeida, funny enough, the only finish on the prelims. He saved us from having a completely dry prelim. Chokes out Alexander Romanov in the first round with a submission. Got me some green in my bank account. Uh, I thought that was just one of the freest bets on the planet. Plus money on a submission for Jalton is crazy. I should have bet the house on it. But um, yeah, he gets it done. Gets another finish. He really needed that. Needs to remind the fans why he was the top, one of the top prospects in like 2022 coming into the ufc the dude is a freak um grant dawson joe selecki boring phil Rowe, jake matthews boring mickey gall basil hafez fun fight um basil has no fight iq apparently after having some of the best fight iq i've seen in his first fight or decent fight iq at least now he just has terrible fight iq doesn't know how to shoot takedowns for the life of him until he's getting pieced by mickey gall who has like 55 overall striking craziness Aylin Perez Jocelyn Edwards boring but twerk at the end so nice Mitropoza Andre Lima boring not much else to say about it um that's my breakdown for the card hopefully we see Islam back again soon capitalize on this moment hopefully Sean Strickland doesn't wait out like he's saying he's going to hopefully Paulo Costa stays um stays active because it's nice to see him back and also I just realized Dustin's now lost in the month of June Islam uh islam defeated the paulo costa curse trippy times man trippy times but that's gonna be all for me today let me know what you guys thought of the card down below and i'll catch y'all